Hi, my name is Neil Androshan Pole, and I created this lecture for you on database quality assurance testing for beginners. It's basically an overview of how to uh, uh, conduct database uh, quality assurance testing, and it'll help you uh, get more information about it. Uh, if you ever want to use this, and it's absolutely free, please simply update the change record and keep my name on there as the original creator and then you could uh, add any alterations, have it reviewed, um, use any prerequisite uh, uh, documents and uh, uh, use it and tailor it for your own company or your own purposes. I hope uh, it helps you. Okay, so I'm going to start this off with talking a little bit about database quality assurance and what it is. Database quality assurance is the uh, process of ensuring that uh, a system functions as it should. That entails uh, not just its data, but its uh, processes like its triggers, stored procedures, uh, making sure that the, the customer's requirements are implemented properly and represented correctly by that, the tables and your um, system and uh, anything else that may be uh, included in it. To properly test a database, you should have uh, um, basic knowledge about data modeling, uh, OLTPs, um, OLAPs, uh, cubes, uh, uh, database structures like uh, how database flows from the OLTP to the staging to the OLAP and how the cube is built on top of the OLAP. Um, you should know about the reports and uh, um, SQL. You, you, you should know SQL to perform table testing. Uh, however, um, so if you don't know any all that or don't have a general idea of how to uh, um, work with a database, how to uh, create a table, how to write a select function, an update function, or a, or a, a delete statement, uh, this lecture is going to be useless. You might as well uh, read up on those before coming and watching this. However, if you do know that, you'll, you're well on your way and I think this will be more than enough to get you started. Okay, so what is the importance of the QA team? A lot of times I hear the QA team uh, smack talk, uh, people undermine their importance. Like, uh, come on, who does QA? It's just testing, you're not even creating anything. Uh, it's uh, often considered as the least prestigious roles out of all the, um, out of everyone in a, in a programming business. Uh, however, despite its reputation, I believe it's one of the most important roles. I have worked as a developer in the past. I have um, uh, created data models, and I, I understand that as a human, humans are prone to making mistakes. Thus, uh, especially with databases, uh, which contain lots and lots of information, especially for billion dollar businesses like banks and uh, insurance companies. One record or missing records can cost those organizations which make their money off information billions of dollars. So as a member of the QA team, you are the protector of the company's information. You have to, you're the last uh, wall before uh, information passes from, uh, uh, before information or before a system is released to the outside world. And once it gets to the outside world, um, the damage will be done. So you are the protector and the preventer of damage. You are the shield that protects a business from losing money. You are the last measure. And uh, if you do your job right, you can take pride in that and realize that uh, you're, you're, you're gonna find things that potentially hurt a business so you are invaluable to a company. So I'm going to first start off with some basic QA theory. This is only brushing over the, the 
um, surface. However, I do believe that uh, knowledge of this would help you to a degree. Um, I'm sure most people that are working in, uh, in the software industry have a basic understanding of the software development uh, life cycle. Uh, so the stages in general are project initiation, requirements gathering, designing, coding, uh, testing, and uh, releasing. You might have heard of the different models to implement a software development life cycle, like the waterfall model, the spiral model, or most currently what most companies are using is the agile scrum model. Uh, however, we're going to be dealing more so with a component of the software development life cycle, which is the testing phase. Uh, so interestingly enough, there exists something called the software testing life cycle. I never heard about this in school, but it's out there. Uh, so the software test life cycle, uh, broadly, uh, is composed of uh, preparing the test strategy, preparing the test plan, creating the test environment, writing the test cases, creating test scripts, executing the test scripts, analyzing the results and reporting the bugs, doing regression testing and user acceptance testing. Um, so let's get into it. Once you uh, start testing, you're going to realize there are different uh, methods to testing. You can do unit testing, integration testing, regression testing, system testing. Once you know what these are, it's pretty simple and it's really basic. Um, unit testing is basically testing the smallest component in a software system. So, for example, if you have a, a class and you test that in Java, that would be considered unit testing. In databases, it would be testing a table, or, or even it would be testing a particular ETL process, or it would be testing a stored procedure. Basically, you're testing a unit that works alone, and, uh, it's, as, and it's as small as you can get for testing. So next in line is integration testing, which uh, follows a logical sequence. Basically, integration testing is taking two units uh, that work together, putting them to part together, and uh, testing their functionality um, as how they work together. It doesn't have to just be two units. It could be more than two units. So integration testing is just taking the different uh, functional units, putting them together, and seeing if they work together as they should. Regression testing. Regression testing, I think, is a little bit different from the flow that we've been going through um, previously, but it's still important. Uh, like, it's, it, it doesn't relate to unit testing or integration testing. That's what I meant by that. Regression testing is basically when you have all done all your tests uh, and you have found bugs. So the developer is going to go and fix those bugs in the system, and then they're going to redeploy it for you to test. So in order to test that system, you can't assume the bugs that previously existed in the system or the things that previously worked are still going to work. Um, this is because fixing one bug may cause problems in other areas of the system uh, that worked before. So every time the developer makes a change or a fix to the code, you have to run all your tests uh, all over again uh, just to make sure the bug fix didn't introduce new problems and that uh, the fix actually works. And system testing. I think system testing falls in line with unit testing and integration testing. System testing is sort of like integration testing, except it's integrating the entire system. So you'll take all the units in a system, like so you're testing the program as a whole, and you're seeing whether it works. So um, basically you're testing the end product. So with a database system, you're testing the entire database. Uh, with a um, with a video game, if you were testing a video game, you'd be testing the end product, the video game, rather than testing the it, it, system testing has nothing to do with testing the individual stored procedures and stuff like that. It's basically testing how the entire system, the end product, uh, works and whether it works correctly. So now we're getting to the types of testing. There are uh, four main types of testing. There is black box testing, 
white box testing, gray box testing, and smoke testing. You will often hear this uh, mentioned in the industry. Actually, I don't even think you'll hear it mentioned. They just assume you know it. Right? I haven't heard many people talking about black box testing, white box testing, gray box testing, or smoke testing, but it's there. So, black box testing is a method of software testing that tests the functionality of an application. Um, so, you don't know how it works on the inside, uh, but you do know what it's supposed to do. So, basically, you're working with a black box, and when you think of a black box, you think of a dark room. You can't see anything. Uh, within that room but you know that uh, uh, when you open the door you'll get into the room and when you go out the window you'll get out of the window you only see the outside of the room and uh, based on what you know um, that unit does uh, you will perform tests so you'll know what for what inputs you'll get a particular output and you test that you have no idea how it works the algorithms that were made to implement it or any De small details about the system. You just know what it's supposed to do and you test it based on that. That's called black box testing. And then, next in line, is called white box testing. This is when you know what's going on. So white boxes, in white box testing, you know all the details of the system, you all know all the algorithms in the system, you know how it was programmed, you got a detailed internal map of that system and you know exactly how it works. And based on that, you can write detailed tests of uh, that particular uh, uh, system and uh, I think it's uh, the best type of testing um, so you know its functionality and its inner workings so you got the best view of a system that you could ever want often programming skills are needed uh, in order to understand and design test cases in this manner and then you got gray box testing. Gray box testing is basically the gray area in between black box testing and white box testing. Gray box testing is when you know a bit about the system, you know a little bit of how it works on the inside, but you don't know everything. So um, as part of the QA team, I believe that the majority of your uh, test cases, in a lot of cases, not always, um, will deal with gray box testing when you're working with the data on the database level. Uh, so it's uh, because I think developers will know the majority of how the system works and then when you're testing you're gonna know what you read what they described to you you're not gonna know everything so you're working with the gray box and then last but not least the fourth type of uh, testing is smoke testing smoke testing is conducted to ensure whether um, the most crucial uh, functions of a program work so basically you're doing a broader sort of testing to see if like uh, the main functionality of the program is there. You don't go into details. If you don't understand this, uh, look it up on Google. And if you don't understand it, uh, then, in the words of Mr. T, uh, I pity you, fool. <laughs> but Google helps clear up most most things. So it's a pretty simple concept once you get it. Next in line is uh, we're going to go into more of uh, a workplace sort of view of how testing is conducted. So uh, in the workplace, it's not enough to know about white box testing, black box testing, or gray box testing. Uh, they often structure testing in a more detailed, planned out way in order to make sure they test all the everything that has to be tested to the best of their ability. So in order to do this, there are often a lot of documents involved. So uh, some of the words you might hear thrown about the workplace is uh, you might hear your uh, co-workers talking about test strategies, test plans, test cases, test scripts, mapping documents, and uh, translation matrices. Uh, these are all important documents and I'll explain to you what they do in just a second. Okay, so what is a test strategy? A test strategy is a company level document and when you think company level that means uh, a document that's created for everyone to view and everyone to be able to understand. It's normally developed by the QA team and it defines a testing approach to test.